The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infants lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them by about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them, to, told by them, by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as they had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel, because he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. To welcome a new year, we celebrate. It's loud, fireworks, so I mean, prior to COVID, huge celebrations, food, gatherings, and we welcome that time. We're counting down five, four, three, and just, just the whole festivity behind it. To welcome, if you think about it, what is the new year? We're welcoming the same position the earth was in <laughs> this time of year last year. It's still the earth is spinning. We're, we're, in a sense, we're celebrating a point in space as we mark our calendar. Contrast that with Jesus Christ now coming into the world. The way he is welcomed. Not with machine gun fire or fireworks or huge celebrations. No. Christ comes in quietly. As we celebrate the coming of Jesus now, given birth, we encounter Mary in a profound way. And there's no better way to, to honor Jesus Christ than to honor the very mother who brought him in on the beginning of this new year. Can you imagine those beautiful moments? Mary holding the baby Jesus in her arms. Again, every parent in here, look back when your child was first born, especially your first one. I have a little hunch. You don't have to raise your hands or anything, but I have a hunch. When women, when a mother holds her child in her arms, she just stares at the baby's face. And I bet you, 99.9% .9 of mothers will sing a song to the baby, a lullaby. I've asked a couple of women this, knowing that they had kids, and I asked them, did you ever sing songs and lullabies to your, to your newborn child as you held them in your arms, as you cradled them, staring at them for hours? And to say, yeah. We just made up hymns. You just sing. You just sing. In fact, you know, science and psychology, we learned that little babies, you know where their vision, because their, their vision isn't quite developed yet, but their vision, where, where, they, where they're able to focus, is actually the same distance, when a, the same distance that a mother would hold the baby in her arms, from the baby's eyes in her mother's arms to the mom's face. That's the range of vision that, the, that a newborn baby has. So it is absolutely perfect. And they actually track the vision of a baby. You know what the baby is looking at when you hold the baby in their arms? It's looking at the area right here, the eyes. The baby focuses on the eyes, kind of goes back and forth, back and forth to the mother's eyes, looks up to the forehead. It's the T-zone, as we say, right here. This is where the baby looks at, just staring at you. We can track the baby's vision. Utterly amazing. Mary now singing lullabies to the baby Jesus. Quietly, subtly, no fanfare. 
Now I wondered, do guys, do fathers sing to their babies as a mother? I would say it's different. But you know where men tend to sing? It's absolutely beautiful. Think about it. Men tend to sing to their beloved, to their spouses, to their girlfriends. Well, I don't know this. Think of now of the people who write poetry or all the love songs, many of them composed by men. Why is that? Because, as we all know, to love is to sing. To love is to sing. St. Augustine intuitively grasped this already in the 4th century when he says, when you sing, you pray twice. Because it's a heart that's ravishly in love that sings. Mere speech is not enough. Because singing, it's amazing, impassions the heart, kindles the heart. And that is why when our Lord, what does our Lord, when he describes heaven in the book of Revelation, what does he say about the angels? What are they doing? They're singing, aren't they? Why? Because they've encountered the living God. They're seeing God face to face and they sing. That is why, by the way, the mass, the holy mass, it is designed to be sung, by the way. If you were to go to mass in the ancient church, they're singing. Why is that again? Because it is the Holy Mass where we encounter the risen living Jesus and through the sacraments. And so a heart that is in love belts out a tune. To sing is to love. Mary holding the baby Jesus in her arms would have sang. When a mother holds a baby in her arms as well, what do you think about? Who does a baby look like? <laughs> oh, the baby has my eyes. Oh, look at that nose. Reminds me of the father. Those lips reminds me of his grandfather. Oh, you mothers and fathers, you look at the baby's face, you study it, and you say, who does it look like? Mary would have done the same thing. Who do you think Jesus would have looked like, by the way? Mary. Why? Because Jesus received the flesh only from one person, Mary. So when she looked at the baby Jesus for hours, cradling him in his arm, in her arms, she would have recognized herself. Hours, hours now holding Christ in her arms. Now fast forward. 33 years later. We all know that when everybody else abandoned Jesus, Mary did not leave. When his apostles scattered, ran away because to be a Christian suddenly became too hard. Guess where Mary was at his side? She never left him. Why is that? Because it was that same Jesus that was being scourged, that was being whipped, that was being tortured, that was being nailed, was the same baby she held in her arms. Michelangelo now beautifully depicted this scene in probably one of the most famous pieces of art in all of Western civilization, now situated in the Vatican behind protective glass. And that beautiful art piece, if you, have, if you haven't seen it, Oh, you have, to, you have to look at it. It's beautiful. It's stunning. It's called the Pieta. It is that pivotal moment when they take Jesus down from the cross. And Mary is there, of course, because what does a mother do? A mother never abandons her child. huh? Love never abandons or strives never to abandon. Jesus there at the, at the, now taken down from the cross. Mary receives Jesus and, is, and in that beautiful Pieta. Michelangelo caps, captures that instant and that powerful moment of Mary now cradling not the baby Jesus, the, but the battered, bruised, bloody Jesus on her lap. And what's amazing about this 
art piece, what makes it famous, why Michelangelo, he carved it when he was just 24 years old, by the way. A young man, in fact, it is the only art piece, if you look across the sash of the Pieta, it is the only art piece Michelangelo ever signed. Because everybody in Rome did not believe that this young man could carve such a masterpiece. So he says, oh yeah? Let me carve my name in it then. <laughs> he would regret it later on in life. He felt that it was too prideful of him to do that. But amazingly, what Michelangelo was able to do, what makes this piece such a stunning piece centuries later, was that when he depicted Mary's face, he was able to capture the delicate balance between, and, and, and when you look at the face, all of these emotions are conveyed. Sadness, of course, her son just died, of course. But peace and trust. Look at the face, zoom in the face, Pieta, P-I-E-T-A, the Pieta. Mary's face, zoom in on her face. She, he captures a pivotal moment of Mary, the sorrow of a mother, but with, with the peace and serenity saying, God, if you allow this, then I know you have a plan. And he captures that beautiful spiritual insight that Mary would have had. So what does that mean for us now? Why the church worldwide is celebrating the solemnity of the mother of God? It is because she is the church, she is holding Mary as the example of how we are to live our Christian walk now. You see, the only reason why Mary loved Jesus was because she knew Jesus. She spent time with Jesus. Why Mary could never abandon her son when everybody else practically had left him. Mary stayed because her heart, which was cultivated through years and years and years of intimate praying, of staring at Jesus, of being with him, listening to him, did not allow her to leave him. And so as Christians who are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ, of the same baby Jesus, Walk with him like Mary did. Stay with Jesus like Mary did. Pray like a saint, as Mary obviously did. Live the Christian faith fully and alive. Let nothing distract us from the faith. Live it intensely. And then what happens, and in those quiet moments of your prayer life, what begins to happen is that you Stare at the face of Jesus. And then this heart of ours begins to be molded and formed and strengthened for the battle. Oh, Mary was not soft. Mary was not dainty. We tend to think of Mary as dainty. No, Mary was not dainty. You can't be. A mother's love is never dainty because love requires us to empty ourselves. And we are called on this day as we begin the new year to live like Mary and to love Jesus as she did. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.